Welcome back to another episode of Musician's Life. Thank you so much for watching. Before we start this episode, I wanna say thank you so much to everyone who donated money to our Kickstarter for Foreplay Clarinet. We are fully funded and we'll now be able to use those funds to travel to the Florida Music Educators Association's annual conference in January. Again, thank you to everyone who donated and shared the Kickstarter with people. I uh, really appreciate your help, and yeah, I just wanna say thanks before we get the episode started. Now, for today's episode, I wanted to focus on something that I am working on right now and something that I know you guys are interested in learning more about with me. A while back on Instagram, on my Instagram stories, I, at, I was showing you guys the process of how I arrange music. I was working on a piece for foreplay clarinet and I asked you guys if you were interested in learning more about my process and what I do to arrange a piece of music and you guys said yes. So this episode is dedicated to that. Um, I'll be showing you two examples of different types of arrangements that I typically do for my current work. The first arrangement that I'll be showing you that I'm working on will be a traditional Christmas song that I'm arranging for foreplay clarinet. And the other song that I'm gonna be showing you is gonna be one from Musicians Prime, I, an arrangement that I'm working on for the upcoming season of Tuesday. Now a few things you should, guys should keep in mind about my process and how I personally arrange music. So I arrange music by ear, I generally don't read off of sheet music or other arrangements for chords to figure out the key. Normally once I start going, I figure out what key the original song is in because I generally like to keep to the original key of the music. If your ear's not strong enough to like pick out notes, that's totally okay. I know a lot of people who, you know, are, buy arrangements and look at the chords and all that stuff and just kind of figure it out from there. I mean, we all interpret music differently and we all got to start somewhere. So that's just important to keep in mind, comparing my what, what I do, compare it to maybe what you might do or someone else does. Whatever you do though, make sure you're staying true to your musical style. Like I said, it's cool to read other arrangements. A lot, I know a lot of people that do it, you know, and be inspired by an arranger's musical style. But I wouldn't advise straight up copying someone else's work, especially if it's, you know, got elements that is unique to that arrangement and separates itself from the original song that it was arranged from. Now with more traditional songs, like Christmas songs, like the first one I'm gonna show you, it's a little bit hard to maybe not imitate some things because it's such a common tune and you know, you can only rearrange a tune so many times, although it's definitely possible. So just keep those few things in mind while we go through this and that will help you along the way. So let's get started on the first arrangement. Okay, it's Saturday night. I'm about to start doing some arrangements. I'm gonna be doing one for foreplay and one for Musicians Prime, one that I'm working on for my Tunes Day series. I'll kind of go into a little bit of detail about how I work on each. There are some things that are similar, but there I all but with the two arrangements that I'm working on, I kind of take different approaches because one is going to be a traditional song, meaning it's like, you know, like, you know, like Christmas songs. That's bit, that's kind of what I mean, like traditional, like that kind of traditional. And the other one is going to be a cover song. And I approach these kind of both similarly, but also different in the same way. So. I'll show you kind of one at a time. Now, before I start arranging, I gotta set a little ambiance, you know, light a little candle, make my green tea, and then we can start. So the first arrangement I'm gonna be working on is a Christmas arrangement of green sleeves for foreplay clarinet. First things first, I've gotta change the instrumentation on note flight, so it is three clarinets and one bass clarinet. When you select a wind quartet in the program, it automatically just picks, you know, a normal wind quartet. But I, so I, I need to change the instruments. Oh yeah, big important tip, don't forget to save your work as you're working along the arrangement. Also before I start arranging, I want to make sure I've got the right time signature for the piece. And then in this case, I'm going to be changing it to 6-8. Now with any songs that are like traditional arrangements like Green Sleeves or any Christmas song like that, I usually start off by working on the melody. Now you may have noticed I also haven't changed the key signature yet. I usually decide that beforehand, but sometimes with songs like this, I like to explore keys 
And in this case, I ended up choosing the key of E minor to write this piece in. So yeah, after I fix that, I'll keep working on the melody for a little bit. Oh yeah, if I notice there are repeating parts, I'll just copy and paste them in the next measure instead of having to rewrite it all. As I'm writing the melody, you know, I kind of adjust notes and things to allow for rest and spacing as the melody moves throughout the piece. Oh yeah, also I've got to adjust the tempo because it's going to be much slower than chord equals 120. And then also I have to change it to a dotted chord or note uh, start because it's in 6-8. Any arrangement I do, I always kind of look up the song and try to find versions that I like. Um, and part of the reason this is important, especially with the traditional works, is because the themes can be kind of repetitive, so you need to know how long you want to make your arrangement, and it kind of just depends on the context of which you're writing the arrangement for. So I listen to a bunch of recordings, and after doing that, I kind of decide on how long I want to make my arrangement. Okay, so based on all of the different arrangements that I heard, I decided that the first theme would have a repeated section in the beginning, and then after that I would introduce the second theme, and then the first theme and the second theme would then repeat again one time only towards the end. Don't forget to save. Before I fill in the other parts, I'm going to change this out of concert pitch because, you know, as people who play B-flat instruments, we're going to have to read it up a whole step. Now that that's taken care of, I'm just going to start filling in the rest of the parts. I typically like to work on the bass clarinet part first because it's easier for me that way and then, you know, I kind of just fill in everything else along as I go. Okay, so I'm all done with that. This is what the final product looks like in its entirety. It's about 1.24 in the morning. I'm really tired and I don't want to stay up that much late because I need to get to sleep tomorrow because tomorrow's a little bit more of a busy day. So I'm going to show you the second arrangement tomorrow. All right, see you in the morning. Okay guys, it's Sunday in the afternoon and I am back. I'm going to be working on my other arrangement that I've prepared to show you my process of arranging and yeah, let's get started. Okay, so for this next arrangement, I'm arranging for three clarinets and piano covering The Ecstasy of Gold by Ennio Morricone from the movie The Good, Bad, and the Ugly. In this arrangement, I'm not outright starting with the melody. In fact, there's a 16 bar intro. Um, I'm going to change the tempo real quick before I start, as per usual. I'm not going to change the time signature since it's already in the time signature I want, 4-4. So I've decided that this 16 bar intro will just kind of introduce parts of the main melody, but not quite the whole thing. Just little intros and snippets of it. Though I've started working from the very beginning, I did place a marker where the main theme is going to start when I'm, it's being played and fully realized. Okay, so once I've worked through that intro a little bit, um, I'm gonna start working on the melody more. Notice that I have a repeat sign up at that intro. I decided to make the last eight bars repeat. Again, just like with the other piece, I'll listen to a recording of this piece so I can get the melody in my head. Also, any other main motives that appear. Now, unlike the other arrangement, I won't just work straight through the melody to the end just because, you know, I kind of like to work on things as I hear them. And so I'll, often I'll work on the harmony parts or the chord fillers and all that kind of stuff. Bass chords, especially you know with piano, there's a lot more stuff I can fill in there. So yeah, I'm just working on building the voices alongside the melody. You may notice that I've put some performance text in that says second time only. That's just because I want some of these motives and themes to kind of build gradually and not, you know, just throw them all at once. So what I have so far of the arrangement. Again, these ones kind of take a little bit more time than like the traditional arrangements. And that's just because I have to do a lot of listening to things I want over and over again. Making sure all the voicings sound right and everything sounds the way I want it. 
So yeah, that's generally my process for how I arrange things. Again, it varies a little bit from piece to piece. It's not going to always be exactly what I just showed you right now, but you know, it doesn't really deviate too much from that. Now to wrap up this episode, I wanted to directly answer some other questions that you guys had about my process of arranging or how I approach arranging that I called out on social media. And by the way, thank you everyone who submitted a question for me to answer for this episode. The first question I wanted to answer was, do you arrange with a formula or is it just a gut feeling? And based off of my process, I would have to say the answer is both. You know, I definitely have certain strategies in mind for the way I arrange certain songs, like with the traditional Christmas songs, you know, when I start with the melody first and fill in the rest. But a lot of times it just kind of depends on the song. And especially when I'm thinking about making my own unique twists on a song, um, I really just kind of go with my gut. I listen to the song over and over again, listen to different versions, see what sounds good, see what, you know, influences me, which direction I'm kind of being pulled in. I kind of choose based off of that. I don't really have a set, it must be this way or that way. I kind of just, a lot of it is going with my gut, but you know, I do have a lot of strategies I keep in mind for the way I do certain songs. The next question I had asked was, do you find it limiting to arrange for four different instruments that all sound alike? And the answer to that is both yes and no. You know, I'm really lucky that with clarinet, we have such a huge range, so we can really do a lot with the instrument when we're covering certain pieces. But there are definitely some things that we can't, you know, because of how our instrument speaks, the way it moves um, with your fingers, the facilities of moving around on the clarinet, um, some things just don't work the same way as if you were trying to sing it or play it on a different instrument. And so in that way, it is limiting, but at the same time, I kind of use things that limit, are, you know, kind of limited on the clarinet that can't be reproduced the same way as maybe a singer could reproduce something in a song that has vocals, for example. You know, I kind of rearrange it so it makes the clarinet shine a little bit more, you know, showcase some of the things that the clarinet can do rather than try and force an exact copy of what the song is doing. So there are some limiting factors for sure, but you know, there's a lot I can do, you know, with arranging for clarinet, which leads me to my last question is, when you arrange, do you try to keep it as close to the original as possible? Or do you try to make it different on purpose? And there's, a, I do a little bit of both. You know, when I was first starting out arranging, I definitely was just kind of following the song exact in the exact pattern, tried with the same rhythms, the same flow, the same breaks, same, you know, key, all of that, just because I really had no idea what I was doing. But now that I've had a little more time to work on arranging, I definitely try to separate it a little more from the original, make it sound like my own arrangement, you know, whether I'm doing it for four play clarinet or I'm doing it for this channel or for something else or for someone else. I try to make my own little unique twist on whatever I'm doing when I'm writing the music because, you know, I want it to sound like something that came from me and not just an exact copy or transcription of someone else's work. Now, it's a little harder to do this with like traditional music, like the Christmas songs, just because, you know, there's a lot of, the themes are really repetitive and, you know, there's only so many different ways you can rearrange the same themes over and over again, other than change, maybe changing the key and rhythms. But that's like the one exception. I feel like that's okay if it doesn't sound, you know, super unique with those kinds of songs. But with anything else, I try to put my own little twist on it and not just make it an exact copy. Thank you so much for asking those questions and thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Let me know in the comments below if you found any of the information I shared valuable and tell me what was the thing that you learned that you didn't really think about or realize before when it came to arranging music. What was something interesting that you learned as this video? Let me know in the comments below. 
And again, if you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell also. Like this, you know, you'll be the first to know when I come out with a new episode of Musicians Live. All right, well, I'm gonna cut it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, catch you on the flip side. Bye.